I'm CT. When I'm not hosting podcasts, I'm living in the real world. I mean, everybody has to work, right? My job is CS, customer service, solutions, relationships, and generating motivation to keep my team pumped up and connected to every single guest that steps into that store and starts filling that basket or buggy full of food. This is CTCS. Episode number 24. What? What? Snow for a third week? I wish there was a way that you could hear the atmosphere of this forest as we do our transition walk. That little period of time where you have to disconnect from being the writer, the producer, the interviewer, the promoter, and you've got to jump into your grocery store clothes. And I I don't know about other employees that have to wear their uniforms and stuff like that if they go through a transition period where it's all of a sudden, you know, it's like once, once I put on the grocery store shirt and I see my name tag, it's like, hmm, I'm not him anymore. Now I'm this guy. Just arriving in the store right now. It's a Wednesday, and usually I have Wednesdays off, but because I have a movie promotion this coming Sunday, I had to switch days, and so I'm not really used to a Wednesday crowd. Just that Thursday through Sunday where everything is just in your face. So walking into the store, it's like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Where is everybody? So, uh, okay, here we go. Good luck, Skywalker. One of my biggest peeves is when people are standing around softly talking and they're looking at you and they're softly talking and they're looking at you softly talking and when you try to get into their conversation they move their circle to a different area softly talk look at you it just, it just makes you feel so so uncomfortable you know i really didn't want to step into a third week where there's going to be snow but it's definitely in the forecast this thing is really building up quickly and uh so, I mean, first we had the ice and snow, and then last weekend we had the snow, and now they're saying that this thing is called a bomb cyclone, that it's forming in the south, and that it is going to really pour a bunch of snow in the northeast, but it's all starting here, and it's going to be snow, so here we go again. So now do you wonder how long it's going to take the, the guests to come in here to start restocking every one of their shelves again? One of my big pet peeves with, uh, with co-workers is when they're supposed to show up at 2.30 in the afternoon, they get there at 2.40 and then say, I'm going to go eat lunch first before I get started. Or they'll they'll go in and they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going to use the restroom first. And then they're gone for 20 minutes in the restroom. And really, you know, you, you can't invade their privacy in a situation like that. But the thing is, though, is that when you start at 2.30, it means starting at 2.30. It doesn't start mean start whenever you're in the mood and in, in the mode. I believe that one of the main reasons why I enjoy being at this particular location, the store, well, you know, the, the company in general, uh, this this supermarket chain, is because they love to take care of the community. They are constantly donating money to so many different organizations. And so when I make that announcement that, you know, don't forget to, you know, um, to, to even up, you know, round up, because that money right there is going to go to a great organization. And, and this company's right there with a check all the time for the peop- people of this community. Ouch. Ow. These plastic bags. You know, first of all, they're always sticking together. And, and, and when you when you pull them apart, you, you it gets hooked up on your, your fingernails and then it rips it all the way back into a hangnail and and then you're, you're bleeding and it's like, oh, now I got to go get a Band-Aid. And then uh, it's just, but man, it, when, when you get a, a grocery store bag hangnail ripped off, um, it, you, it's going to be pain for at least a, a week. I mean, it's like you, you, you forget that you even have that finger. You want to forget that you don't have that finger. Here's the reason why I do a transition walk. I, I just got off the phone with a 20-minute conversation with actor Eric Roberts, where we really just really got into a deep conversation about acting and the procedures and the process and his new movie and everything like that. And then uh, once the conversation is over, you set the earphones aside and you realize, oh, I got to go work at a grocery store now. And and so the transition walk is going to help, you know, uh, prepare me for the, for this this day, which is uh, basically it's going to be um, uh, you got to go in prepared for yet another snow day on the way. And it's really official now. It's not even like it may happen. No, they're showing everything that it's we're headed into a pretty huge storm and they're calling it a, a bomb cyclone. Uh, I feel sorry for the northeast and the grocery stores up in those areas because they're really going to get pummeled in the next few days. This is a a major first I've never heard of or experienced before. A guest comes in and a concerned look on their face and she goes, "Um, 
Did you guys find a diamond necklace around the store? No, no, we did not. And we looked in the safe and all that kind of stuff just to make sure that somebody else on a different shift didn't find it. And then she says, my insurance company says that you have to write me, write them a personal letter explaining to them that you did not find a diamond necklace. Well, in a situation like that, the first thing you got to do, you got to get management involved. And so, uh, and so that's what you do. And then management will take care of it from that point forward. But I, I'd never heard that before where, no, uh, you, we, we didn't find your diamond necklace, but, but we have to write a letter saying that we don't, that we didn't find it and stuff like that. Interesting. Rule number one at any grocery store or business, get those earbuds out of those ears and do your job. Pay attention to what you are doing. And and here's the thing about it is don't walk around your business sitting there, you know, you know, text messaging and stuff like that. Even even if you if you got there early, it's still the image of the store that, oh, well, I'm not going to that store because their employees are always text messaging. They're always they're always listening to music. They're not listening to us at all. So, man, come on. Come on. It's, it's, it's only seven or eight hours, if even that, for some employees. Just just come on. You can put up with it. Get, get over the little, you know, electronics addiction and, and, and pay attention to our guests. I love being called over to a register. Very serious look on this guy's face. I mean, serious. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, something went wrong. Oh, God, what was said? And he looks at me and he goes, dude, I can't find the Twinkies. The Twinkies? Oh, I know where the Twinkies are. And I said, you're not going to believe where the Twinkies are. He says, I looked in the bread section, man. I even went over there into the deli. No, 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 no. No, no, you're not going to believe where the Twinkies are. So we go putting through the store and everything like that. And I'm explaining to him. I said, I think it's one of the most genius ideas on the planet. And we go over there. It's in the milk section. Don't you think of Twinkies and milk going hand in hand? That's a, it's an amazing place for Twinkies to be. This might actually come across kind of strange, but... You don't know how much you miss someone until you realize that you are seeing them for the very first time in four months. And when Jeff came in tonight, Jeff wasn't, he wasn't walking. Jeff was in a wheelchair. Jeff was being pushed by his wife. He's wrapped up in blankets. And uh, um, of course I had to go say hi to him. And it's like, Jeff, I said, how you doing? And I, I assumed, I assumed, I thought, okay, you know, I'm, I'm a 59-year-old man. Men of age have strokes and things like that. And he was in a horrible, horrible car accident. His body is just tangled, and he's really had to fight for his life for the past uh, months. And so, but just to see him smile and crack jokes. Oh, my God. I said, you, you still have that sense of humor. I said, that's priceless, buddy. I said, you got to come back in here more often. So night number two is officially over. It's 9 o'clock, and uh, the threat of snow, our guests are pretty much saying, yeah, whatever. And um, nobody seems to be really kind of, you know, bamboozled by this or, or in fear of it. And I think the reason why is because they're not saying ice and snow. And I think that's where, especially here in the South, people start freaking out. It's just snow. And uh, you, know, you sit there and you say, well, there's going to be a trace up to two inches. And, and they're like, huh, you know, uh, either that or the bank accounts are empty. And they can't afford to come out and, and, you know, do what they just did the other day or a couple of weeks ago where they spent over $500. I really didn't set out to do this, but, uh, I mean, three weeks in a row, snow in the Carolinas. I mean, you got to document it and see how people are acting and reacting. And uh, right now I'm on that transition walk going from the studio where today I was blessed with the opportunity to talk with a comedian, Judy Tenuta, and actress Gina Gershon. You know, you, you take it all in, you do everything you're supposed to do in, in what is really your career, and then you put, all, put away all your toys to go hang out at a grocery store. I am inside the store uh, starting to shift right now, and the, uh, the snow crowd is already here. I mean, the lines are as backed up as what they've been for the past couple of weeks. Um, uh, in a situation like this, you know, you have to wonder what, what's going to run out first. You want to take a bath? You want to? You think it's water? Do you think it's going to be bread? What do you think it's going to be that's going to be running out first? And we'll, we'll keep a, a running post on that and see how, how well we are at the end of the night. I, I, I predicted this a couple, of, a couple of shows ago, a couple of episodes ago, that people would, would overbuy, and then in, in, in the days ahead, like maybe seven days, I, I predicted, they, they would bring back their veggies and things like that, saying, well, I just bought these, and, and, and they're, they're no good. And, and right here in front of me right now, they, there must be 35 or $40 worth of veggies. They look like crud. And you're telling me that you bought them like this just today, and when you got home, they were looking? like this? 
I can't believe a story like that. I, I know. So Bill, who's been training uh, to, to be an assistant manager, uh, comes up to me and he says, dude, how do you do it, man? You, you take one item back through the store to put it up on the shelf, and you're stopped by 75 people asking, so uh, where, where is this at? Where, where, can, can you tell me, can you lead me to, can, can you, I need to know, and, and you sit there and he goes, he says, how do you get through the crowd? And, and I said that I just, I look at him and smile, and I take the time to show them that when I'm in the store, I'm still customer service. I'm, I'm, I'm still doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. And if I just point, then that's no different than, you know, Kmart or even Walmart and stuff like that. It's over there. It's over where? I, I was there. So I'm not going to be that way. Um, I'm going to take them exactly where it is. This is definitely a northerner versus southerner kind of thing because the northerners are just fascinated with the way that people are freaking out that the threat of snow is in the air. Now, are we going to get it? They're saying a trace to th two or three inches. It doesn't mean that we're going to, but even here inside the store, talking with managers and stuff like that, and they, you know, they reassured everybody that that is on until 9 o'clock tonight that... Hey, look, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's going to be probably raining when we get out. The snow itself will not hit till 11 o'clock. You should be home by 11 o'clock. So please, let's, let's take care of the guests. There's going to be a lot of them today. You know, ex exercise your right to breathe. 7.25 p.m. outside. Chilly. I'm not seeing any moisture or anything like that in the headlights of the cars or anything like that. Someone said, oh, Jesus. Wait a second. Change of mind. Yes, I do see ice on the ground out here. Okay, um... Uh, Okay, so it is. It's starting to uh, to flow at this point in time. It's coming down. You hear? Oh my God! Do you, do you hear me slipping out here, on on the ice? Uh, not a good idea to be out here. And oh my! So yeah, the ice has already started. It's going to be a very slow ride home. Pouring like you wouldn't believe. No snow yet at 9:11 p.m. The uh, that later we got into the night, the quackier people got. I mean, seriously. And I don't know if it's because everybody gets locked in on this survivor mode of, I've got to have my food. I've got to have my food. It's in the forecast. It's in the forecast. And maybe it is. Maybe, you know, it's... It, but uh, we, we had one gentleman. This has nothing to do with survival. But then again, I could be being biased here. It, he, he took off with 12 cases of beer. Two of us tried to stop him. I ended up hurting my thumb. Got it caught inside the cart. And, and it's like, it's like you sit there and you go, do I chase him? What's going on? And the official rule is, no, you can't. You can't chase him. You can't do that we, because they believe our safety will always come first. And uh, because, you know, just hurting my thumb uh, could have been a, a much bigger thing, even though the guy was just basically walking. He wasn't running. No way. He was just walking. He was minding his own business. And then probably about... About 12 minutes before 9 o'clock, before we're closing, um, we had someone, and I, I'm always aware that we, we could be being TikToked. In other words, somebody filming. And we had a, um, a young lady on, on lane number two all of a sudden just start screaming. In fact, I was up at the CS desk, and, and the people that I was serving, uh, they, they turned around and looked at it and said, uh, CT, it's time for you to go home. Because it, obviously the, the quacks are out. And she, and, and she goes, because that woman, She's talking in tongues. And, and you know, and, and what I love about our team is we don't react. We, we don't get all hot-headed. We don't do anything. We, we stay focused in on what is important. And that is, is that let's figure out a solution as to what is going on here and make sure that all of our guests are protected. Anyway, so here we are. Uh, it's now 13 past 9. Um, the, the rain right now, it's extremely cold. It's 37 degrees. Will there be a fourth day recording on this third weekend of the potential, the potential of there being snow three weeks in a row? I will check in tomorrow and let you know. That's it from the CS desk. <laughs> it's 637 a.m. on day number four. And... I'm standing in the forest that which we live in, and if you can hear the wind, if you could feel the cold of the snow on the ground, the crows in the distance, the jets flying high above, a third weekend in a row of nothing but snow, and I'm planning for my trip to CS, because that's what we do. 
customer service. All right, man, the shift has already started on day number four. It is so slow, so slow. People are not coming out of their neighborhoods that fast at all. And things, I mean, we've only got three registered open. Four people have called in because they can't get out of the neighborhood. So it could be a very, very slow day. So here we go, focus. People are a little bit on the edge. And uh, and how do you know that is when you, you walk into a department and one of our guests is, is just screaming at, at the guy in the meat counter. Hey man, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. How you doing? And uh, um, and you know you want to listen in on it. And I don't want to be an eavesdropper, but you want to listen in on it and try to figure out, you know, what is the situation. And and the guy behind the meat counter said something interesting to me afterwards. He goes, he says, he says, man, back in the meat counter, anybody will talk to me. But here, here's the thing. If I were out on the street, they wouldn't say a damn word to me. And he says, that, that hurts me sometimes. All I was doing was saying hello to him out in the parking lot, and he thought I was taking some sort of pot shot at him. Wow. And it's like, here's the thing, here's the thing. Without going deeper into the story, I loved what happened in the end, where they got together at the front of the store. And they hugged. They worked it out. But the drama that was taking place was just through the roof. We talked about this two, three weeks ago, you know, with, with the ice storm and stuff like that. We talked about how people were going to buy veggies and everything. Somebody just came in with, with flowers that they purchased. Are you ready? Over a week and a half ago, week and a half ago, on the, uh, it'd be the uh, 17th, and, and they go, I don't have the receipt. Um, but man, these these flowers, these roses should have lasted at least a week and a half, almost two weeks. Uh, man, they were they were dead after six days, and and I'm telling you, man, people are just they're 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 take it back kings and queens is what they are, and and it's one of those where you just you you have to and, and they don't have the receipt, and then when they say, well, we bought it here, and we have a way of searching, you know, the the, the computers and stuff that they bought it there, they didn't buy it here, and it's it's just interesting that. You, you want to be on their side 100% of the time. But if you don't have that receipt, it's, it's, I, it's just not going to work out. Walking into the men's bathroom, people like to pull pranks or maybe they just don't know how to run a toilet. But they've, they've emptied the entire roll of toilet paper. You know, one of those big rolls that businesses get into the toilet. They've used every one of the toilet seats. And the whole entire pot itself is, is just, just soaked up with, uh, with, uh, with paper. So guess who has to clean it up? Guess who gets to go with the gloves on and make sure that he's not going to pick something up by putting his hands in this? This, you know, who, who's laughing at jokes like this? You, know, you kind of look around the room and you go, is there a camera in here watching me? Because is, is that what it's going to be all about? Grocery store faux pas. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. I thought I did my homework properly. I thought the, the NFL playoff game today was supposed to be today, you know, be, between... Um, San Francisco and Los Angeles, it, it's tomorrow. But all day today, I was talking to people about the game today. <sighs> oh, I feel like a putz.